up and welcome to the Hyping Cow Podcast, where we discuss what's been done, what's done right, and what's just hype in comic books and pop culture. In this special All Infinity War issue, we're harnessing the power of the hype stone as we discuss who was missing, all the comic book comparisons, and what it's like to lose. I am your host, the Ebony Rye, alongside the Mad Toothman himself, Cody Joe, so without further ado... We're all gonna die! All right, everyone, I'd like to welcome you to a very special spoiler-free issue of The Hype and Cow. Loki's dead, Heimdall's dead, fuck you. Essentially, if you're not a white male from the original movie, your number's up. Rhodey's still alive? Yeah, well, technically, Rhodey's been around since before the Avengers. That, that's true. Rhodey's double OG. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about Avengers Infinity War. Cody, let's hear your uh, domestic and worldwide box office estimate. Cody, what do you think the domestic... And worldwide box office numbers are at Cody the, at the moment, or Cody. what they're going to be? Cody. Yes. All right. Well, let's not. Let's, okay. Um, <laughs> before we get too yep. deep into Avengers: Infinity War, I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to just throw some uh, some casual news at you real quick. Uh, something that was made apparent to me this afternoon, and uh, anyone else who's in the circle, which there's not many, especially at this age, people like to play. And people like to say, <laughs> but they ain't shit, Cody. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. Hasbro just bought Power Rangers for $522 million. From Saban? Saban. Oh, my God. We're going to have a Transformers Power Rangers crossover. Hopefully. In February, Hasbro actually bought out the licensing rights from Mattel for $22 million, which has been credited to the new purchase. Hasbro now owns the entirety of of the Power Rangers franchise. And we all know that Hasbro has been trying to get on this cinematic universe train for a minute. Yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like the new Power Ranger movie. A lot of people are like, oh man, this is fucking up my childhood. This isn't how Power Rangers is supposed to be. From an adult who still watches Power Rangers, (laughs) Power Rangers is not a good show. No. This movie was definitely an improvement. Yeah. And to be honest, I liked it. I didn't think it was bad. I just don't like the product placement. It's pretty heavy. I mean, it's real heavy. I mean, it's it's, it's obvious that Krispy Kreme paid for half of that movie. Almost as bad, or worse, or just as bad as uh, Man of Steel. Man of Steel, yeah. So, Avengers Infinity War, fucking it up in the box office. Mm -hmm. Just beat the uh, previous record set by The Force Awakens domestic opening by 10 million motherfucking dollars. Yep. Um, Expectations for the movie, 700 million worldwide. By the end of the week, son, by the end of the motherfucking week. And China don't get it for another two weeks. Yeah, they don't even know. (laughs) They have no idea. That's exactly why those motherfuckers don't have the internet. They would be in Spoiler City and there would be nothing for them to see. Beijing, you don't know how lucky you are. Yeah, by the time they do get it, it's going to be over a billion. Everybody's seen it more than once. You're probably going to see it more than three times. Legit people saw it more of that on its opening day. And there's people that went, uh, sat through 31-hour marathon. I mean, I don't know how you could physically do it. That would turn your ass into porridge. Yeah. One thing, though, I want to mention that I, I think is cool. Like, this doesn't happen very often. When it came out, Black Panther was currently 8th in, in the box office. After being out for 9 weeks almost, Sunday, it jumped back down to the top 5. Either people wanted to go see Infinity War and it was sold out, so they went and saw Black Panther instead. Saw Infinity War, and they're like, oh shit, I need to see Black Panther. Or they went and saw Black Panther, like, in anticipation. But that doesn't happen. I mean, when you have movies that are connected like this, that's possible. This is the comic equivalent of all these superheroes have their own issues, and then boom, you have the the event issue. You have Civil War, you have Infinity Gauntlet, you have, you have the event. <laughs> like I said, if somebody said... Explain Infinity War in two words, I would say too much. Someone said do it in one word, I would say much. Before we get into the first act, let's talk about who wasn't there. So who wasn't there? Obviously Hawkeye, Ant-Man and the Wasp. The one that I really care about the most, that I was super disappointed who wasn't in it, was Valkyrie. So, since Thanos already murdered half the Asgardians, the the other half, are they safe? Uh, Especially when you uh, consider... Valkyrie's involvement and in everything, that Valkyrie took a ship with the other half of the Asgardians and they escaped. Or were allowed to escape. Uh, which makes sense because it seemed like everyone in that initial scene of Infinity War was DAF. Yeah. Super I mean, dead. 
Who else isn't in the movie? Happy Hogan. Not in the movie. Um, obviously, Agent 13. Not in the movie. Sharon Carter's yeah. niece? Peggy Carter's niece. niece. Sharon, Sharon Carter. Carter. Okay. OG Guardian's not in the movie. What? Stallone's team. I think the, they're Ravengers in the movie. Yeah, but, but like we, they but, have their own. Yeah, in the comics, they were. that was the original okay, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy lineup. The Doctor from Thor. The one that like Loki possesses. Selvig? In the, yeah. yeah like, he's I, not in the movie? No. Good like call. I, I, I think he may have may play a role in the next one. I guess let's break it down, man. Jumping in. That, that initial line of uh, uh, Ebony Maw was originally Mephisto in the comic books. Mephisto was sucking the dick of Thanos pretty thoroughly after Thanos got his hands on that Infinity Gauntlet. That first scene, pretty dope. I think it's playing back into, I mean, it's obvious to play yeah. it back. Like, Loki saying to Tony Stark, we, I have an army. Yeah. I, we have a Hulk. That line literally opened up the action for that scene. Yeah. Dude, that was fucking cool. Yeah, it was like, cool. And Like, uh, is Thanos, like, like, a street boxer or something? Dude? I mean, like, he's straight up just like, pa pa pa. Some, some Krav Maga. Some, yeah, some <laughs> titanium Krav Maga. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that he was a military man back on his home planet of some sort. Yeah. Usually people don't jump from, like, grocery store attendant to warlord. Yeah. Obviously, Thanos has previous training and sufficient combat training. For sure. Of course, the Hulk is used to just beating the shit out of everyone just because he's stronger than they are. Yeah. But Thanos was just as strong, definitely stronger, but more so had the combative ability. But the one thing that I really fucking hated was the killing blow. He Slam picks them up and he slams them against the floor of a spaceship. We've seen the Hulk jump through spaceships. Is the floor strong enough to knock out the Hulk? But see, that is another nod. When Thanos picks up Hulk and slams him on the ground, it's basically when Hulk smashes Loki on the ground and just leaves him. But anyway, other than that, I mean, seeing him just throw those hands at Hulk, he gets him in the neck, gets him in the kidneys. When the Hulk kind of like whimpers away yeah. and he lets out that sound, you're like, oh man. He had his pride destroyed. Yeah. They use that as an excuse not to have him come out. I would have liked to see more Hulk fighting Thanos, which I'm sure we will get in the next one. But since like Ruffalo didn't get much face time in Ragnarok. Also, I feel they did it out of money. Because they spent a lot of money on making Thanos look good. And it would have took another good chunk of mustache removing money. For sure. To get Hulk in there a good bit. Another thing about the Hulk is that like in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, when Doctor Strange is summoning like all these superheroes from across the Marvel Universe, they try to call him the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And he says no. At first, he's like... I'm not about it. Then Iron Man was like, well, we'll let you back in the Avengers. And that's literally all he needed to hear before he was like, all right, we can work out the details later. Yeah. So I don't know if that's like a direct nod to the Hulk in the comics, just initially saying, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. They did a hell of a fucking job marketing the movie as if he's in it. Oh, yeah. You know, not, a, not only the posters, but the toys. The him busting out of the Hulk buster. <laughs> yeah. That's just a straight up lie. Yeah. yeah. We were so hard for that. We were so bummed out when we thought it was spoiled for us. Yeah. But we still wanted to see it. Yeah, yeah. What's worse? Thinking that you know something's going to happen and then it not happening? What's or... worse? Having a soft dick or achieving full erection just to have it lopped off with a rusty scimitar. <laughs> as far as CG is concerned, everyone looked really good except for Proxima Midnight and the first time that Tony Stark puts on his nanite armor when it like covers its face, face it's like oh my god what the fuck like his it, it looked like a burger king commercial yeah it looks fine <laughs> everywhere else but just in that scene it, it looked wonky yeah. for sure yeah and i think proxima midnight suffers from the uncanny valley the, the closer yeah, something you're... actually looks like a human the harder it is to animate to look like a human. Yeah. your eye is automatically drawn to the the fakeness it tries to pick up on it as best as it can there's so much in this movie that I wish would have been saved for the movie. The first appearance of Spider-Man in action. Cap's introduction. These little things that aren't a big deal and that don't reveal a lot, but they are essentially reveals. Mm -hmm. When I saw Cap, like, standing in that shadow, I was like, this is, like, this is how the first time you see him in the trailer. I don't like that. I like that they switch things up that's in the trailer. Like, the scenes that are in the trailer... That's in the movie. Some are completely different. I hate when I see a trailer and every, and then I see the movie and everything I liked about the trailer is the only things I like about the movie. One thing that, uh, that I absolutely do not like, they did this a little bit, not so much as Age of Ultron, I feel, 
But when they like cut dialogue together, it annoys the piss out of me. Yeah, so. saying, yeah the whole tell me his name again. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, the battle in New York, we get a demonstration of the Ebony Maw's powers, or at least this version of the Ebony Maw, which seems to be solely telekinetic. He just seems like he's a, like a space sorcerer. Yeah. Like, well, that's what I'm. Well, that's what I'm saying is that it just it literally seems like his powers are just telekinesis. If anything, he's a telepath. You know, he's got the the power of persuasion in the comic book. But in this movie, like, literally all he was doing was throwing things around. If my if I have one big complaint about the movie, it is the Black Order. I feel the strongest one out of the Black Order was Ebony Maul. But he died the earliest. He died very soon and very easy. I just feel like if, if any of them should have stuck around as long as they did, Ebony should have been there for a while. The big dude... Who, what's his name? Black Dwarf. Yeah. Or I think in the movie they call him Call Obsidian. Yeah. Which, in the comic books, the Black Order is, is Call Obsidian. But, yeah, the fact that they, they basically just saved him so Banner had someone to fight in the Hulk suit. That was his whole key, because they put the glove on him and then kills him in the force field. But, and then Corbus and Midnight, I, I just feel like they were lame. Corbus being killed by his own weapon, don't you have to... Just, I mean, they never say this. They never emphasize on it. Even though when Cap has Corvus's weapon and they get they teleport away, the weapon gets sucked away from him. Like it has to be with Corvus. Yeah. But they never once say that the weapon is tied to him or you have to destroy his weapon. Yeah. But well, uh, Vision stabs him with it, and that's fine. So yeah, in the comic books, Corvus Glaive cannot perish unless you destroy his weapon. Also, in this movie. They both can kind of control their weapon at will, it seems. Yeah. There's the time in the movie where Black Widow has a Proxima Midnight Spear, and then it's called out of her hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the comic book, Aren't her spear is like like a solar flare caught in like a space-time rift. Like, isn't it in the comics? Aren't they like married or something? They're definitely homies in this. Yeah, like they don't. Degree. Yeah, they don't say anything. But, but also, I like the fake out in Wakanda when she sees Black Widow again. Something about your friend couldn't make yeah. it, and it's like you'll pay for his life or something. I mean, he wasn't even dead. You'll pay for his blood with yours. Yeah. The one thing that always irritated me is everyone referring to the new Captain America as Nomad. Yeah. Over and over, that's all you see, that's all you read, that's all you hear. Cap is now Nomad. When in the comic books, he literally dons a version of the Captain America costume that's red, white, and black, and he goes by the Captain. Now, in this movie, people refer to Captain America as Cap and Captain often. Now, I don't know how many times he's actually referred to as Captain America, but... He has no problem with being called Captain. If he really was uh, standing by Nomad, he would have been like, hey, I'm not the captain of shit. Mm. Maybe like coffee, huh? mm. Is this a French press? Yeah. Fancy. Dude, I stay French pressing. I don't even have a microwave upstairs. You don't? No. No, man, fuck that you shit. You don't, do you? I, how do you live? <laughs> like, how do you how just do don't you eat microwave food, man. No, that's, that's... Just eat it cold as fuck. That's... I, don't have... <laughs> I set it out in the sun to roast like Thor. <laughs> she will make your cum stink. Make your... <laughs> that fight scene was fun. Wait, which, which fight the, scene? Which one? Captain America, Falcon. The fact that the Falcon can come busting in and kick one of these dudes over. The only ability he really has is just being very good at the tech he has. For those of you who do not know, in the comic books, Sam Wilson has the ability to speak with birds. He has the ability to see through their eyes. And it's kind of alluded at he has that, red, he's, red that he's wing. got like mutant tendencies by Professor X at one point. This is an ability that he was born with, but he doesn't have like the X gene. He's kind of like mutant adjacent. Yeah. Now, and person. And yeah, and of course, <laughs> and of course, he you know has wings and shit, and he has the ability to fly. And of course, in the comic books, you know his wings are more specialized, more weaponized. Sometimes they're more crystalline looking. But in the in the movie, it seems like his only abilities include flying and Uzis. And the one thing that I hated about Falcon's costume, it's like give this dude some sleeves. Yeah, yeah. Like at least give him long sleeves. Yeah, like can... everyone else has fucking armor. If Black Panther had the time and the endurance. Technically, he should be able to take out everyone, right? He's invincible, essentially. This movie is just, it's almost too much to tackle. Like, it's almost just way too fucking much. Let's talk about when Spider-Man shows up. He gets on the Q, the Q ship, the introduction of the Iron Spider suit. 
Peter Parker once again with the uh, the pop culture references, uh, bringing up aliens. So I, I feel this version of Peter Parker, instead of him being like a bookworm and into photography and stuff like he has been in the comics and past movies, I feel like this version is way more into like pop culture nerdness. Like he is in legit into like Star Wars and old movies and I feel and I don't really think he's really gives two shits about photography. Uh, Homecoming does begin with footage. Oh, you're right. From yeah, his camera. That's, that's right. You're so, right. Yeah. so we have to assume that that's a different Iron Spider suit than at the end of Homecoming. Why? And Homecoming, Tony Stark isn't using nanotechnology. Why would he build him a suit with nanotech? Even if he had it developed before he could test it. Yeah. So we have to assume that it's a new nanite based version. I mean, that's all Tony does in his spare time is build suits. Yeah. I mean, legit. <laughs> the nanobot armor is inspired by both the Bleeding Edge costume as well as the Model Prime from the all-new, all, new, all and the, the new, all-new, yeah. all-different Marvel after Secret Wars. And that's where you get, like, the wings and the fins. Now, the Bleeding Edge armor was composed of nanobots, but the Model Prime is more known for, like, trans figurine and morphine into like weapons and wings and yeah. let's just talk about the battle on titan now that we're on titan yeah. with part of the avengers part of the guardians of the galaxy that entire scene where uh, iron man's got drax down on the ground and uh peter quill's got peter parker by the neck mm -hmm. who is your master we get a little bit of exposition from dr strange who claims to have seen 14 million yeah. 605 yeah, or some yeah. shit one outcome that they win uh, Doctor Strange, goddammit, you know what he does. He lives out or observes 14,602,000 possible outcomes and only one where they win. So obviously we know that when he gives the time stone to Thanos, we know for a fact that Tony Stark had to survive. I just did not expect, I don't mean to be jump, jumping off Titan, the whole sacrificing thing for the Soul Stone. Once again... Perfect example of too much. The Soul Stone, how to acquire the Soul Stone, that entire scene, the cameos involved in that scene, too much. Too on the nose. It's the Soul Gem, so you have to give a soul to get yeah. the Soul Gem. Like, that's just... That that cameo was shoehorned in. 100% fan service. It just doesn't make a lot of sense that for the last 70 years or so, he's just been chilling on this planet. Thanos makes a comment on, on the Red Skull knowing the place. And it's like, dude, he just, like, you've been walking for, like, 14 minutes. Look around you. There's not shit. Like, just don't fall off the edge of the fucking cliff, and you should be straight. I would bite if he throws Gamora off the cliff, and some uncharted shit pops off to where things start spinning and turning and rising up from the floor. But the fact that he just, like, wakes up and he has it in his hand, like, what did you do right after throwing her off the cliff? Did you fall asleep? Were you knocked out? Another thing, like, what's... Okay, so Red Skull has been there this whole time guarding the stone. What's he doing now? He has no purpose. Is he dead now? Is he free? Is that what's going to happen in Vintage 4? He's like, I'm getting the fuck off this rock. I'm free as fuck now. Like I said, it definitely seemed like a nod to Nick Fury Sr.'s role in the Marvel continuity and the 616 comic continuity now. Because he's known as the Unseen. He's taken the place of the Watcher and he's chained to the moon. Like he's literally tethered. To the moon. It was the white Nick Fury, right? That was the white Nick okay, Fury. Okay, okay. If that cloaked figure ended up being the Unseen, played by David Hasselhoff. <laughs> you ever seen the, the 1990 Captain America movie? Where Cap is a notorious car thief? That's not his role in the movie. He just straight up steals people's things. Like, at one point, he is on the side of the road. And he pretends he's injured. And the guy pull, pulls off to the side of the road. Parks, gets out, comes, walks 20 feet to Cap. Are you okay, sir? Cap stands up and runs to the guy's truck and just leaves. Classic Cap. Doesn't say a word. Let's get into the Battle of Wakanda real quick. We get another faceless army, as per usual. First one being the Chitauri, uh, second, of course, being the uh, Ultron. Sub-Ultrons. And this one, we get the Outriders. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the Outriders in the comic books, know that that's kind of not really their thing. They're not so much foot soldiers as much as they are meant for recon and uh, espionage. I'm not sure if they are introduced in the Infinity storyline, but the way that they were introduced was that they can read into your thoughts. It looks like he has the entire race at his disposal. There's a moment 
in that scene where Cap has like both of his shields like in the neck of an Outrider. It's still going crazy. Imagine holding a blade into something's throat and that thing just thrashing after you. I, I get so tense watching those scenes. <clears throat> because I get so tense watching those scenes, I like openly accept any levity whatsoever. And they do that a lot in this movie where something real heavy happens and then they'll say something to bring the mood up yeah. immediately afterwards. One thing that I wanted to bring up especially in regards to this movie, now this is something that everybody seems to have an issue with. And that's the fact that Thanos... So when Thanos shows up to Wakanda and he's actually going through superheroes one by one, more so than he was on Titan, because at least on Titan, on Titan they were ganging up on him. In Wakanda, he's actually going through superheroes one by one. Yeah. And then of course everyone is like, well, why doesn't he just turn everyone into ribbons? Why doesn't he just teleport everyone away? Why doesn't he just whatever to whoever? And in the comic book, it's explained by way of Mephisto convincing Thanos that Mistress Death isn't going to want to fuck with him unless he does something courageous. And he's not going to be able to really demonstrate true courage when he wields absolute power. So he convinced Thanos to give the heroes a chance. And in doing so, allowed that entire arc to be possible. When Thanos inevitably gets the Mind Stone after Scarlet Witch destroys it, he reverses time, and then he just crushes it. Or he doesn't crush it. Vision's head is what he crushes. Yeah, during Infinity Gaul in the comics, when Thanos does kill Vision, he kind of just like rips all the wires yeah. out of his chest. And I feel like to him, when he rips the crystal out and you see like the wiring and the mechanism and stuff, I feel like that was a little little nod did we get gray vision when he was on the ground he was gray so do you is think... that something yeah i didn't i thought that was a little weird that he turned gray i'm even thinking that during the infinity gauntlet he was gray somewhere along the line he lost like what made him his was... wonder man yeah <laughs> he lost his soul and he became real robotic while we're on the subject what color is the vision's dick is it green is it red is it both is it's that gold man is that cape gold bouncing off that that green bam yeah. just, it unravels too just like his cape so to wrap this up this was my least favorite part of the movie the very end of course i thought that this entire movie was going to be a little more isolated a little more confined that obviously wasn't the case you don't like cliff the cliffhanger it's just that that specific cliffhanger just sort of erased all the stakes that were involved in that movie. We know who's coming back. Yeah, yeah. It would have been different if they would have just, if it was more of a mixed bag. The old Avengers are gonna do what they have to do to swap out for the, the, the newer heroes. Or whatever the case might be. The majority of the promotional material for this movie was where are you gonna be when it ends? Who will survive? When you see Spider-Man disappear, when you see Black Panther disappear, yeah. when you see Doctor Strange disappear, it just pushes the stakes to the next movie, I suppose. Yeah. And most people should know who's coming back, but when you think of this movie as being a part one, I guess it's not that big of a deal. No. Especially when we only have to wait a year. But now we kind of absolutely know what the fuck's gonna happen yeah. in the next one. So now we kind of absolutely but seeing, like, know. We do, though. I've bumped into people at work being like, I cried. Like when Spider Man died, like how how is he dead? The average the average person can have I think a little more fun with it. Like I mean we have our fun, like we have a whole different kind of fun, but they're in like the the ignorant bliss. Yeah. Like oh my god, what's gonna happen? Sure like were. next year is gonna be so cool. So we are left with the original lineup. Yeah, like blatantly, except you know Hawkeye still up in the air. His family probably vanished, and he's like, what the fuck? Definitely, his family disappearing is what's gonna push him into assuming that Ronin role. You see him with his tattoos and his fuckboy haircut. Before we wrap things up, you have your phone on you? Yes. I'm gonna need you to open up your web browser. Go to www. Did Thanos kill? Dot me. Wait, wait, what? What am I doing? Go to www. Okay. Did Thanos kill? Kill. Dot M E. You were spared by Thanos. Oh man, I'm done. You're dead. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. <laughs> so, and for for a moment, I was thinking like maybe they all just say because it's like uh, you were sacrificed for the betterment of the universe or something like yeah. that. 
But yeah, you just go to www.didthanoskill.me and it'll tell you where you stand. Alright everyone, remember, we're here, you know us, Cody and Ryan, we're your friends. Share our shit, subscribe. Yeah. We have a Patreon, jump on it, help us feed ourselves, because we have to feed ourselves before we feed our families. Yes. Otherwise, who's gonna feed the family? We have to be fed to bring this content, which will bring us the money to feed our family. It's the circle of life. Content costs money. The shit ain't free. It's not like we get online and just scroll through Facebook and have shit to talk about. This is hard. I had to throw my wife off a cliff. We don't know who's listening. The info you're getting could be restricted. We, we're risking our lives. You're lucky you're getting this. <laughs> have you ever seen Jacob the Liar? No. It's uh, Robin Williams. He's a Jew. He lives in a ghetto. He has like an old radio. Yeah. And this little girl comes over and he gets like behind the sheet. He's, he's acting like he's playing the radio, but he's actually just doing impersonations. And he gets around the ghetto that he has a radio. And the Nazis come and kill him. Oh, damn. Yeah, it sucked. But that whole period sucked. Casey Case, I'm some Nazi. Yeah, that's about it. Well, what about our sign or our goodbye after the Patreon? Uh, yeah, I guess we gotta do that. Like, end it. Like, so, guys, yeah, jump on over there and help us out if you can. But for us at the Hyping Cow, thanks for doing the outro, Cody. Now, nah, goddamn it. <laughs>